it on the dotted line. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Hoping and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at life with my own eyes. Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Cornwallis has surrendered. The war is over. It is not over. Cornwallis is not England. I shall quit my throne before I shall break apart this British empire, which I love. I shall never surrender to those American rebels. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Those words are about freedom. back in 35. I'm told it's the oldest complete house in all the Berkshires. It was in this house that we drafted our statement of grievances against English rule. Unfortunately, you can see how much attention King George paid to it. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. You're welcome, ma'am. Betty, come here. What is the meaning of this? What, madam? What, you say? Look, dust on my Wedgwood vase. I'll fix it right away, madam. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Bless you, missus. Choo! <clears throat> Mrs. Adams, I'm delighted you could come. I do hope we will see your John back from Europe soon, too. If the news from Yorktown is good, Colonel Ashley, perhaps John and Dr. Franklin will rejoin us soon and bring along a peace treaty with them. It is my dearest hope that that comes to pass. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Adams, uh, I am Theodore Sedgwick. I so admire the contributions you and your husband have made to our new nation. Theodore is the finest attorney in town. You don't want to find yourself on the other side of a case from him. <laughs> Come, friends. Let us begin our meeting with the Declaration of Independence. Good idea. Here, here. Wonderful. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Hi, honey. Did you come to help? That large man from Natick's drinking his ninth cup of punch. Lizzie, quiet. Well, what's more important, us running out of punch and me getting in trouble, or some old words the master's saying? Old words? Huh? Do you know what those old words are about? I don't, Betty, but I have a feeling you're about to tell me. Little sister, those words are about freedom. You and me have been slaves since we were born. What do we know about freedom? Nothing, Lizzie. Nothing at all. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if someone offered me one minute's freedom and told me I had to die at the end of that minute, I'd take it, just to stand one minute on God's earth, a free woman. Dearest 
mother. So much has happened since I last wrote. General Washington has won at Yorktown. It was truly a miraculous convergence, as they're calling it. The French fleet, led by Admiral de Grasse, captured the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. Trap General Cornwallis. He could get no help or supplies from the sea, and with the town surrounded on all sides by Generals Washington and Rochambeau, he could expect nothing but trouble from the land as well. The siege was terrible, and I feared it might never end. Finally, the lack of food and the endless artillery shelling forced General Cornwallis to concede defeat. Over 7,000 British soldiers surrendered their weapons. Surely with so large a loss, the British will now realize the futility of this war, and we will finally have peace. Andre. Dr. Franklin, wonderful news! Victory at Yorktown! Cornwallis has surrendered! The war is over! This is indeed wonderful news, mon ami. But is the war really over? That, I think, will be up to King George to decide. It is not over! What of our other generals, hmm? Cornwallis is not England! What of Clinton and his 6,000 men? What of our fleet? We are the largest naval force on the ocean, sir, and I'll thank you to remember that. We have defeated these colonists time and again, and we shall do so now. This change is nothing, and I shall write as much to the Secretary of State for America myself, directly. Away with you. I have business to attend to. Dear sir, there will be no peace without honor. Lizzie, more lemonade. I'll get it, madam. I told Lizzie to do it. Lizzie? Right now. What were you eating? Uh, scraps, madam. You ate the family's food without asking me first? Yes, madam. I I'm sorry, madam. You're sorry. Very sorry, madam. E excuse me, madam. Uh... I did not order you to leave. Now clean that up. Uh... And that. And that. Uh... And that. And that! This is fascinating, Mr. Sedgwick. I think I should like to practice law myself someday. With all respect, Sarah, there are no women lawyers. With all respect, Mr. Sedgwick, perhaps I shall be the first. Perhaps you shall indeed. Excuse me. Betty, come in, please. Thank you, Mr. Sedgwick. Let me take your coat. Now, please, go in and be seated. Now, Betty, what can I do for you? Sir, I would like you to help me win my freedom for me and my little girl. Oh, excuse me? I don't want to be a slave. And I don't want my girl to grow up as I did, knowing nothing but slavery. Thank you kindly. 
You're very welcome. Very. Are you asking me to sue Colonel John Ashley, the most important man in this town, for your freedom? Yes, sir. I fear for my child's well-being. You can't let the child be in harm's way, Mr. Sedgwick. But it's more than that, sir. I heard that paper read that all men are born equal and that every man has a right to freedom. I am not a dumb critter. Won't the law give me my freedom? And what, my fellow members of Parliament, did King George Ostrich-like really in plain words say when he got the news of the defeat? He said, our losses in America have been most horrible. The taxes the British people are paying for this war are outrageously high. But even now that Lord Cornwallis has surrendered at Yorktown and our hopes of victory in America have utterly disappeared, I forbid anyone from thinking of peace. My insane rage for revenge lives on, and only the total enslavement of my American subjects will lay it to rest. Gentlemen, what the King speaks is madness, and you, Lord North, must tell him so. Yes. Yes. Betty, why did you come to me? You know I'm a close friend of the Colonel's. Master said you're the finest attorney in town, and you were there in Master's study a few years back, writing those other words about freedom everybody was saying. You mean back in 73, when we discussed a Bill of Rights and a Constitution for Massachusetts? Yes, sir. When I was waiting at table, I was keeping still and minding things. I heard you, gentlemen. In all you said, I never heard but that all people are free and equal. I thought long about it and figured I'd see whether I did not come in among them. Sir, you must help. Has a slave ever won her freedom in court before? Yes, sir. A number of times. But those cases were always based on a master promising freedom to his slave and then breaking that promise. Colonel Ashley made no such promise to Betty. So you won't take Betty's case? On the contrary, that's exactly why I will take Betty's case. Yahoo! Ahem. I do not care what that vile Mr. Charles Fox says in Parliament. I do not care what anyone says in Parliament. Lord North, I do not care what anyone says in the entire world. I shall quit my throne before I shall break apart this British Empire which I love and serve. I shall never surrender to those American rebels. Never! This is a great opportunity for us. Let's hope they free the poor woman. Can Mum Bet win, Mrs. Adams? She has fine lawyers in Mr. Sedgwick and Mr. Tapping Weave. And she has right on her side. <clears throat> yes, Sarah. We shall see whether those two weapons are strong enough to carry the day. Is that the jury? It is. But all the jurors are men, and they're all white. How will Mum Bet get a fair trial? Give them some credit, Sarah. Perhaps they'll understand we are all the same race, the human race. Judge, on behalf of Colonel Ashley, who has served his state and country so well in so many ways, we ask that this case be dismissed immediately. What? No. Will they do that? And that Bet be returned to her lawful residence, the home of Colonel Ashley. Absolutely not. Order! On what grounds, sir? Judge, the custom of our nation considers slavery to be right and correct. Bet is the lawful Negro slave of John Ashley. Colonel Ashley can testify to that. It is a simple question of ownership, you see. Therefore, we ask you to return Bet to Colonel Ashley immediately. Oh, that's outrageous! Good justice will be done! Oh! <laughs>
Your Highness. Now my cowardly Premier, Lord North, has sent me his resignation. They are all against me. Well, I shall not accept this. And I shall not let my colonies go. The British Empire, like these hounds, is strong. The rebels, like the fox, are weak. Majesty, I'm afraid sometimes the fox does escape the hound. The court rejects Colonel Lashley's motion to dismiss this case. Mr. Sedgwick, you may speak for your client. Thank you, Judge. In the past, a slave in Massachusetts has been freed only when a master went back on a promise to free that slave. But we would like to make two different arguments. Two new arguments. First, no Massachusetts law has ever established slavery as legal. I defy Colonel Ashley to show me one that does. Second, even more importantly, even if such a law did exist, it would be canceled out by our state's new constitution. As my client has so wisely pointed out to me, our Massachusetts constitution states, all men are born free and equal and have certain natural, essential, and unalienable rights, among which may be reckoned the right of enjoying their liberties. Gentlemen, Betty cannot be the lawful slave of Colonel John Ashley for a very simple reason. Slavery is unlawful. <laughs> it's just a scrape, Catherine. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> you ready to catch your brother now? Betty? Yes, Sarah? What will you do if you lose? Honey, my husband, rest in peace, died in this war so we all could be free from your friends back in England. Not so some of us could be slaves to some others of us. Somehow, sometime, me and Lil' Bet are gonna be free, and you can count on that. Betty, Sarah, the jury's coming back. <sighs> Gentlemen, have you reached a decision? We have, Judge. We find that Bet is not now, nor has she ever been, the legal servant or property of John Ashley. We award 30 shillings in damages to Bet and order John Ashley to pay her for all her service since she was 21 years old. We also declare that John Ashley shall pay all court oh. costs. <laughs> Congratulations oh. to us all. This is a great day. Isn't it wonderful? All our people shall be free. <laughs> you got him, Catherine. Good going. Friends, friends, to courage, to freedom, to mum bet. To mum bet! Hooray! Hooray! I've given myself a new name, a free name. From this moment on, I'm Elizabeth Freeman. Elizabeth Freeman! Hooray! Betty, I'm hoping you'll come back and work for me. For salary, of course. We sure could use you back. Thank you, mister. But I'm gonna stay here with the Sedgwicks. They've done nothing but treat me right. And with 10 children and Mrs. Sedgwick ill, somebody's got to do the cooking. <laughs> I'll leave you to it then. Goodbye, Betty. Girls, it sure feels good to call that man Mr. instead of Master. You're free, baby. Just like I always promised, you're free. 
My good friends, King George has come to his senses. He wishes to negotiate peace with France and with the new United States of America. Hmm, perhaps I ought to make that announcement again. <laughs> Mother, there's more good news. Another slave by the name of Cork Walker sued for his freedom in the Supreme Court of Massachusetts, and also won. The decision will surely lead to slavery being outlawed in Massachusetts. Listen to what the Chief Justice said. Slavery took its origin from European nations and the British government, but a different idea has taken place here in America. Everyone is born free and equal. Everyone is entitled to liberty and to have it guarded. Slavery is in my judgment as effectively abolished as it can be. Thank you, Mr. Ashley. Mother, these long overdue decisions for liberty give me new hope for my new country. Our new country. I hope and trust that the horror of slavery will soon be abolished in the rest of our 13 states. Forever. For mother, if one American is not free, none of us are. Bad the rap.